Hey, Snackers, Matt and Napoli here. Hello, Snackers. Kareem Iskander here. Welcome to episode 134 of Snack Minute. Uh, this week, we'll, we're bringing back a returning guest, uh, Abdiel from Thousand Eyes. Hey, Snackers. Hi, Kareem. Hey, Matt. Uh, I'm Abdiel. I'm a technical leader at Thousand Eyes. And today, I want to talk about uh, Thousand Eyes, um, a new test that we are introducing into the platform called the API test. Um, and in, with Thousand Eyes, we can gain network visibility, which then can be correlated to API metrics. Uh, and this helps us understand the performance of your overall app, apps and services and how they impact the user experience. Um, before you get into kind of the details of it, can you provide a little bit of an overview of API monitoring and potentially its importance in today's technical landscape? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Thousand Eyes, like I mentioned, uh, provides network visibility on top of API performance. Um, so APIs are kind of the invisible force behind everything, right? They act as a backbone to communicate applications and services. Hence, your API monitoring needs to include continuous observation for further analysis, root cause, um, but also to ensure performance, security, and reliability. Uh, the ultimate goal of any monitoring strategy is there to reduce or help reduce uh, mean time to resolution. And at Thousand Eyes, we have a range of different tests that can help you achieve that. So, for example, we have network tests, routing, DNS, voice, web. And within web, there's uh, others like HTTP, FTP, page load, and transaction tests. And now we have API monitoring. Uh, before, you could do a simple HTTP test for your um, API, so like a get request, but it wasn't specific to API monitoring. Uh, you could also, if you had a very complex scenario, you could also run or write a transaction script to go and run through the whole workflow of your API. Um, however, the metrics that were connected to it uh, were more relevant to an application, uh, a web application, for example. Uh, with the new API test, we are now, now collecting uh, information uh, that are more relevant for the app owners or the network uh, uh, teams that are responsible for uh, ensuring the API uh, response time, et cetera. Before we get into a demo here, because I'm I'm super interested in seeing what we could do with this, could you give us a little bit about uh, in, of information around what's the different type of APIs uh, testing that we could um, we can run? Right. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this today because uh, engineers from the different teams uh, need to hear this so that they can relate to how they can uh, leverage these uh, tests because people might be monitoring part of it or they might not be monitoring this at all. Uh, so you have a smoke test, uh, which is, does this work? It's a very simple, uh, responsive uh test, you know, you want to see if the API is responding or not. That's the simplest version of uh, testing. Then you have functional testing, which is where you input data and you uh, compare the result of your test with the expected uh, outcome. And then, you know, observe whether we you are getting the output that you expected to have from your application. Uh, and for that, we have assertion rules where you can configure them to help you determine if the result of your test meets the criteria uh, of your desired uh, service. Then uh, you have regre regression testing, which helps developing engineering teams uh, to compare uh, a new version of the app to the uh, old version and compare the results and see if that's a, the expected outcome as well. And finally, you have integration testing where uh, you want to ensure that all the steps in the API workflow are uh, meeting a certain criteria, thresholds, and of course, here comes alerting and all of that. That sounds great that we can cover all those areas. I actually have an interest in the functional testing, but that we probably don't have time to deep dive into it. But I do think we have a little bit of time. I have a feeling that you uh, you have a demo that you'd like to show us. Yeah, this is a very straightforward um, demo. It's uh, more of showing you, giving you a preview of what you you could uh, see in the configuration side, um, and then um, show you how you can start using that to correlate network to uh, impacting APIs and application services. So here, uh, if you see my screen, uh, if you go to the uh, cloud and enterprise agents and then test settings uh, and business as usual, add a new test, select web, then go to API, give it a name. And down here in the basic configuration, we have a URL um, 
right now I'm just using a Cognito service from AWS to um, for authentication. So that's the URL that I've configured here. Um, then you click on the configure target API, and this is where you can start uh, configuring your uh, the steps to for your um, API workflow. So say that the first step in my uh, API is to uh, to get authenticated, right? So uh, I here is where I would configure the URL for the for the uh, authentication identity provider, and um, so we have an authentication tab here. Uh, where we support basic and bearer token, uh, all of the parameters here, the the headers that you would expect to 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 add. For example, I can add here the content type uh, that in my case uh, needs to be uh, form URL encoded. Then you have the assertion rules that I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, which basically determine the criteria, the success criteria for your test. So we, we have two options, status code, uh, which is the response of the API uh, or response body. So say that this step will be successful if I get an access token in the response body, for example. Uh, so this is how quickly you can set it up. You can add more steps, uh, for example, to use uh, a variable that you uh, defined here on the next step. The other thing that I wanted to mention uh, to show you here is how you can aggregate views in the uh, 2.0 uh, views uh, in the Dowdenize platform uh, to compare the metrics that we collect for the API transactions to those of the network. Um, so for example, here I'm comparing API transaction time to loss and latency uh, from the network. And you can see how there are some spikes for transaction time and how you could start correlating it with loss and latency, which are also small spikes down here in the view. Um, these are two different lo physical locations. So you can see how it impacted one agent more than the other. So this is how, uh, this is the type of, uh, of information that you can leverage for your overall monitoring strategy. Of course, there's alerting and all that. I have a question on the correlation on the loss and latency. Is that the loss and latency from the um, service that you're making the API call against, or is it the loss and latency on your network end? So that's the loss and, um, these metrics are collected by the same agent and the same test. So the, the test itself is for API, and then the agent uh, will uh, start collecting the metrics along with the API uh, test that you configured. So we are looking at the response at the network uh, path between your agent running this test and the API endpoint. So These server I hope that point. answers okay. your question. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, I, I sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I was just intrigued by the by the correlation because that's not always something that you get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is uh this is Dalton is in a unique position of giving you these uh this correlation, right? Because you usually get one thing or the other, right? You monitor network, but you don't really translate it into services and you monitor the application, but you don't really look at the underlying network connecting you there. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is that you get metrics for each step of the API. Uh, so for example, step, step transaction, uh, but also other um, metrics such as DNS, the connect time, it's still negotiation time, et cetera, so that you're able to identify at each step of the API um, calls that you make in the, that make your whole um, workflow, you know, who's responsible for this amount of time uh, for these, um, uh, for resolving this uh, domain, et cetera, et cetera, and, and how that adds up to your, and reflects to your user experience, right? Because uh, when you click on a, on a graphical interface, in the backend, we really, something is, being called, right? An API is being used, and uh, we're giving you visibility of that with this. Uh, unfortunately, I'll be able to, that's all the time we have, uh, but I have to say, I mean, we love APIs here on Snack Minute, and this is just an awesome tool uh, to add into our into our arsenal here to allow us to keep an eye on what what's going on. I mean, being able to, to see each step of the transaction, being able to correlate it to loss and latency in the network, I mean, this is kind of mind blowing. So, um, you know, snackers, go ahead and 
uh, check out the the new API testing that is available through Thousand Eyes. Thanks so much for being with us. And Snackers, I think if I'm not mistaken, FDL, there's going to be a Cisco U tutorial around this feature in uh, Thousand Eyes. So if uh, you know by the time this episode is aired, you know we'll have the link for you here. So go check it out. And then uh, I'm, I'm I know I'm excited to play with it. So thank you for showing this uh, to us, and thank you for your time, FDL.